Hey guys, Dave Anderson here. This video guide will take you through everything you need to set up and start live streaming an internet protocol camera that is remotely installed and requires power over ethernet, PoE, to work. The live streaming platform that I have chosen is YouTube, the encoder software is OBS, and the IP camera controller interface is OnVIF. To download OBS and OnVIF, see the links in the description. To purchase the devices that you will need to make it all work, links are also in the description. Let's get started. If you're planning to remote the camera and need to send power to the camera through the CAT6 cable, then use a small CAT6 cable and plug the 5 port POA switch on port 5 into your router. Plug the 100 foot CAT6 cable into port 1 through 4 of the POE switch. Then plug the other end of the 100 foot CAT6 cable into the splitter Y adapter that came with your camera. Use the waterproof connectors that came with the camera to make the CAT6 connections waterproof. Plug in the camera CAT6 cable into the first leg of the Y adapter as well as the round power cable into the second leg of the Y cable. Check for operation of the camera. It should go through a short functions check. Download OnVIF, then run the executable file. The default username and password can be found in the documentation that came with your camera. OnVIF should automatically recognize and find your camera. Click on PZT Control to move your camera around into position for streaming. Click on Live Feed on the OnVIF Control Panel. Note at the bottom of the screen you will have an RTSP URL. Copy this RTSP URL onto your PC clipboard by highlighting, right mouse click, and select copy. Download OBS software via the link provided. If you find that you do not have a sources dock, you can come up here to Docs at the very top menu, click on Docs, and then you can select it. There are scenes, sources, audio, mixer, etc. I'm also going to throw on here chat because that's what we're going to do in YouTube. We're going to add our IP camera now. So we come to sources and we come down here to this plus sign. This is to add a source. And that's what we're going to do. Click on the plus sign and we're going to come up here to media source. Click on it and we're going to call it IP camera. Click OK. If this comes up with this local file checkboxed, uncheck it. That's not what you want as a local file. It is an IP camera. It's not on local file. I come here to input and remember I have that RTSP in my clipboard. So I just paste it on there and it accepts it. Now I do want to change the network buffering back to about one meg and the reconnect delay as quickly as I can get it. That's about one and a half seconds. That's fine. And then I'll also want to use the hardware decoding when available. And then I just click OK. And Bob's your uncle. Now you have your IP camera onto OBS. Now that we have our IP camera on OBS, I need to turn it off so that then you can see what exactly I'm doing next because we're going to have to go up here to settings which is in the file menu click file come down to settings click on settings and then you're going to come up with this screen here when you get to the settings screen you're going to go to stream click on stream and then you're going to come over to connect account that is going to open up a web page and it is going to ask you to sign in to one of your accounts that you have on YouTube. And I'm going to use my flocking sanctuary at gmail.com. Click next. I have a password already saved into Google. If you don't, type your password in. Click next. And this is just going to ask you, do you want OBS to access your Google account? And you'll press continue. And the authorization is completely successful, and I can now close this page. Now we can see that the 
connected account is Flocking Sanctuary. Anytime that I want to change that, I can just disconnect this account or add another account. Now I'm just going to press OK. Now that that is taken care of, you'll notice that you'll have a chat menu that has arrived on the side and your control dock has changed. I'm going to go up to the Manage Broadcast, click on it, and you're basically going to come in here and you're going to fill out this for the first time, whatever that you're going to want. Uh, so your title, and this is just like a YouTube, how you how you'd put up a YouTube video in the very start. So you'd, of course, put the title on, Flocking Sanctuary, and then you would put uh, your description of the video, what privacy you want it as, the category, and yes, you can even upload a thumbnail. Check the latency as low, or you can, you can even press in here ultra low, and you can enable the DVR to record it. Once you have finished this, you can create the broadcast. Here's the thing though, when you newly verify a YouTube channel, is you have to wait 24 hours after it has been enabled. After you verify it and it becomes enabled, you have to wait 24 hours in order to do a live stream. So this is why I'm getting this error because it hasn't been 24 hours since I verified this channel. Once I am verified, that notification will not come up. It will basically just go away just like this. All I do is click on start streaming and it will start that live stream right away. Thanks so much for joining me on this video. I hope this has really helped you get your IP camera that needs power over ethernet up and running. This is the best way to get it onto YouTube, bar none. The encoding software is free, OnVIF is free. I like that. There are a few components that you need. Make sure you check out the description. All the links are right there for you at your fingertips. Thanks again for watching. I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe out there and God bless. Wonder what happened just down the hill. Looks like an accident.